Hi, I'm Jordan. This is my dad, Jim, the grumpy plumber. And today we're going to be sharing the mistakes that you do not want to make when installing an on-demand or tankless water heater. Mistake number one is not owning one because you definitely want one. That's a curveball. Once you've had it. Well, we didn't discuss you know that I mean? one. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, but you know, I think they're great. I think they're the greatest thing you ever made. Don't let some water heater guy try to talk you out of it, okay? So, you know, they're, they're just great. They can go indoors, they can go outdoors. They might cost you a little more money up front. You know, nowadays water heaters are getting expensive anyway, and pretty soon you're gonna have to pla have a plastic vent on them. You know, no more atmospheric, because you're gonna follow California no matter what you do, or Vermont, because we are always the leaders with this air pollution stuff and all of us. They, they do take up a lot less room. I all gotta right. say, my mother-in-law has a small condo. She can move her water heater into it on demand, move it outside the building, and she has like a new room now in her condo. It's, they're, they're really great. Yeah, they, for they space just savings, take, yeah. even if they're inside where you have a closet, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's usually 30 some inches long, 32, 33 inches long. They're 16, 17 inches wide and you can keep them up a little higher and you can put something underneath it. So they're just, and they're quiet. They're really quiet, okay? Indoors or outdoors on them and they last. That's, that's like the big thing. They last a lot longer in a water heater. Okay, number two is, is I always feel you gotta have a water softener. They sell a filter, but you know, why not soften all the water in your house? You know, how many people in this world say they get a reaction from soft water? But you know, so they're too well, what bad. What if you they already have soft water? Like your city water is already below the, the hardness level. Well, then you're pretty good, but you know, then maybe you should still add a filter. You know, when you add a softener, you can take it, if it's a good softener or a large softener, you can take it right down to zero that hardness, and that's great. What does I mean, that do for the on-demand heater? It helps it from liming up on the inside of it or mm -hmm. stops it from, you know, the iron or whatever you want to call it, everything. Plugging. Calcium and magnesium. Calcium, yeah, yeah that calcium stuff, building up inside the heat exchanger. You know, mm -hmm. just keep it moving. Because the water moves through there pretty fast and it's pretty hot. When you do heated. a water softener, does that mean you don't have to like flush it or maintain it as much? No, you just still. The flush, it's not a hard job. You can go on YouTube and it takes, you know, it takes me, you got to take an hour out of your life, but it's easier to flush than a normal water heater that I tell people you not to do. You don't have to do, do very often either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I probably, you know, I did mine. Mine was about five years old. I don't know exactly, but I just flushed it maybe about a year ago. Yeah, you know, maybe I'll wait 10 years. So we digress. Yeah. So number two, consider a water softener or some type of filtration unit to help prolong the life of the on-demand unit. All right, mistake number three. You gotta have a big enough gas line, okay? That, that's a big thing. And it doesn't mean you have to have a one inch line, but you need to be near a larger gas line, like a one inch or three quarter inch. Or most, most houses are usually plumbed in one inch. And then they might come to, your furnace might be in that area. You know, if you're putting it outdoors, you might want to put it near the gas uh, meter and stuff like that, and you come right off from that. But the newer ones are starting to go on a smaller gas line. Oh, that's nice. You know, you can plumb them a half inch. I think it's for, I'm not going to tell you the footage so I'm, in case I'm wrong, but it used to be we ran one inch or three quarter all the way to the units to make sure they had plenty of gas. Mm. And, you know, the, it must be working because a lot of guys are doing it. Some guys are saying no and some and everybody else is doing it. So, you know, that's a guess. Let's let's move on from there to number four. Yeah, mistake number four. Okay. Is I always say bigger is better. Okay. Even if you had a one or two bath house, I'd still buy the biggest on demand. I usually install the 240 Navian. I mean, it's, it's a big, it's a 200,000 BTU thing. It's not that much more money than a you know small one. I think they only make one or two smaller than that. So why even do that? You might as well spend a couple extra hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever it is, and get the larger one. Okay, so that's one thing. You either want it indoors or outdoors. If you put it indoors, you can vent it with two-inch PVC pipe. You can go, I think, a maximum of 30 feet on that. The exhaust pipe must be sloped back towards the heater. Okay, because it's going to condensate. It doesn't have to slope a quarter inch per foot, eighth inch per foot, as long as it can slope back. You cannot put any pockets in the line, okay? If you're in a basement, you might have plenty of, of intake air, so you might not have to go and get intake air from outside. If you're in a very small room, tight room, all doors on that, 
then you got to go outdoors and get some air. A lot but of people cover with mistakes. Make sure you buy an indoor unit if you plan to put it indoors or an outdoor unit if you plan to put it outdoors. That's pretty basic, I right. feel like. That's why That's he's more talking about the yeah. intakes yeah. And, and how to... But you only need the it. pipe at, if it's outdoors, it's very simple, okay? You grab your air, That's you got it. everything, your exhaust, everything's there. And just a little bit more on the inside. Next thing is you need to have uh, the valves that go on the bottom, okay? They're already made up. Uh, supply valves. It's got a, a ball valve to shut your water. That's uh, your intake water and your and your your supply water off. It's also got a hose bib so you can hook up to flush the heater when you want to clean it. And uh, you don't have a check valve. You usually, don't need a check valve in them. Uh, depending on the company, you might have. Does the brand? Check. Does the manufacturer provide the isolation valves? Or? No, you buy those separate. Mm -hmm. Probably right around 100, 150 bucks. But they're well worth it. You can make them. But why make them for that kind of price? They just connect right to the bottom of the heater. Same thing in the gas line. The gas flex connects right to the bottom of the heater. Uh, some of them come with the circulator on. You might have to put a pump. I would re not recommend that. That's why I like the Navian. Now you can circulate the water without, they have it built into the unit. Hang on, is that so, mistake number seven you just said about the circulation line? No, nah, let's put it in that first one. Seven or eight. Now, where, that was, well, that was, <laughs> yeah, we're I don't know. Where whatever, we're where are we? But just listen, just pay attention. You know, they're a good way to go. There's nothing wrong with them. There's absolutely nothing wrong. You know, look into them. If you have a basement and it's all finished off and the heating, the water heater sits right smack in the middle of the basement and all boxed in and everything else, go back to the old heater unless you can get it a vent to the roof. If it's on an outside wall in the basement, it's perfect. Go up, go out the door to exhaust, bring the intake air in if you think you need it, you know. Outside, put it in the back where the meter is. Use the meter. Yeah, you know, hopefully the meter ain't in the front yard. But even this, put it out there. They look good. Can someone do it themselves, or they should they hire a, plumber, a professional? You know, you're talking to a guy that does everything himself. You know, I'm sorry, but I hate waiting for people to come to my house and fix something. But I am a licensed plumber, and I can put them in and everything else. And, and a lot of you people that watch my channel, you're mechanical. That's why you're watching. You know, you can do that stuff yourself. But just buy the right unit. See if you can buy a Navian. You know, that's what you want to get. And, you know, a lot of these wholesalers that we call them wholesalers nowadays are pretty much just another, uh, you know, they have all kinds of prices on them. They all might sell it to them, you know, so it's worth your to get it. Or somebody, if you got a friend that's a plumber, have him get it for you, you know. But they're worth having. That's the thing. Worth having. If you can put your own water heater in, a big tank water heater, you can do an on-demand heater, okay? I wish go. you luck. You got to seven it. mistakes. Okay. I wouldn't call it a mistake. You're going to put in a new water. You're going to have the greatest thing in the world. That's a real, you're a lucky person now. Hey, if you like these ideas, you know, you can buy me a beer. He'll tell you where. You can click the thanks icon down below. If you want to thank Jim, grab, he'll, he'll use that money to buy a beer for himself. And if you want to watch another video on on-demand water heaters, Jim shares his favorite on-demand he water heater brand. He mentioned this video briefly, because in more detail, you can watch this video right around this area right here. Thanks for watching. Thank you.